I don't have the mic. But never mind. Um, this man needs no introduction, but because he has run the vast majority of the work for Fostem for the Open Media Room, in conjunction with Adi and Fran and myself, I'd welcome him around the floor. Thank you. So it's Christophe Massio, and he'll be talking about uh, UPipe, a very interesting project that uh, we work on as well. So. So thank you, Kiran. Maybe I should have changed my T-shirt because I'm not the dev room uh, person now, but I'm the company uh, person now. But they told me not to do that in front of the camera, so <laughs> so it was too dangerous. So um, a new talk about UPipe. We already did one last year uh, and the year before, um, but it will be on a different topic this time. Uh, the first question uh, for people who weren't there the previous year is what is UPipe? Uh, so UPipe is uh, a young uh, multimedia framework written in C. Uh, we started in 2012, so that means we're quite young. Well, not as young now, but uh, still quite young compared to similar projects who were born in the 1990s. Uh, that means we have, uh, of course, a lot fewer modules. Uh, of your support, but also we have been able to make some educated choice about the uh, technologies of today. Um, so UPipe was initiated by uh, my company, Open Head End, uh, and uh, so, uh, some of my employees, but there are now three supporting companies, including Kiran's as well, we use it, and last time I counted seven contributors. The focus of UPipe is a bit different from what you can see with VLC or maybe GStreamer. We, we focus on reliability and efficiency and uh, above all compliance. Uh, so that means we don't aim at playing uh, any kind of file that's uh, on the internet. Uh, if it doesn't comply to the standard it's supposed to comply to, uh, we will say may. Um, we also focus on broadcast and professional applications. Actually, most of the use cases I have today uh, are on the real world, uh, in the real broadcast world, uh, with real customers in the broadcast uh, domain. Uh, the license of UPipe is MIT and Dell GPL, so it's not both. Uh, some modules are MIT, the core is MIT, the headers are MIT. Um, the main pipes are MIT, that is what you need to build a pipeline basically, uh, uh, duplication uh, stuff, uh, sources, file source, file sync, uh, UDP and so on, all of that is MIT. We have some modules that are LGPL, that's mainly um, the, um, the code that deals with the uh, codec format, so what we call the framers uh, in, in our lingo. And also some support libraries are also uh, LGPL, like uh, LibAV codec. So the, code, um, the binding code is also LGPL. Um, so those of you who were there the previous years, what's new? The question is simple. Um, so too long, don't read. Uh, we've had a lot of work on the event loop API to make it more complete. So now you don't need to call anymore the event loop directly from your program. And it also is uh, launching, uh, is is launching pthreads, pthread workers. Uh, we have a nice utility to dump uh, pipeline in GraphVis format. So um, some of the slides you will see later have been automatically generated from UPipe uh, using GraphVis. Uh, you will see that's quite nice, so it's quite verbose at, as well. But uh, uh, the Luagit bindings, I talked about them last year, but it's finally in. Uh, it's finally been merged in, so you can now write. Um, um, a, a, a UPipe client using uh, just Lua. And uh, Lua is interesting for that because it abstracts uh, all the ref counting of the structures. All of, most of our structures are ref counted, but um, in Lua, Lua takes care of the ref counts and frees automatically the structure you don't use anymore. In C, you have to do it by hand. Uh, so that's interesting. Um, in the feature side, um, we've had people contributing, a third company contributing an HS client. Um, so uh, well, some other frameworks have also HS clients, but uh, we now do have one where you could choose the bandwidth or the variant you, you want to have, and uh, you can re remultiplex it, repurpose it in a different format. I will show later an example where we repurpose HLS to a transport stream, a UDP transport stream, standard transport stream. Um, we've had some work on H.265 as well, so we're able to decode it and support it. Uh, Vang support in the SDI, if you don't know what that means, uh, don't care. 
uh, if you do, uh, bad for you. Uh, and uh, well, I wanted to, to release um, uh, pre-release number five, uh, uh, but the work is not finished yet, but we'll probably do that in the next few weeks. And after that, 1.0, we hope. Um, so in, unlike previous year, I'm not here to give you an extensive talk on the insides of your pipe and why it's a good uh, pipeline, but I will give you examples of what you can do with your pipe. And I will start with an inventory of the, all the modules we have for inputs, outputs, filters, and so on. And then I talk about use cases, typical use cases that are in production today. Um, so the inputs we have, well, some of them are quite standard. Of course, in the, in the broadcast world, we still have uh, specific connections like uh, SDI and ASI, so we support uh, two vendors for that. Uh, natively inside your pipe, we support, of course, DeFi, UDP, HTTP, and so on protocols. Um, we have a compliant ESDMAX. So compliance is important for us, as I, as I said. We also have an RTP <coughs> DMAX um, to be able to read one or several RTP streams uh, from the same program. HLS client, I talked about it already. I have here multi-cat directory. It's a bit of a specific format that allows you to record 24-7 a stream in chunks and expire all the chunks. So we can also support that you know, with UPipe. Uh, it comes from a program that's called Multicat as part of the Vidaran project. Uh, externally, we support LibAV format for, for sources. Uh, it's actually a work in progress. Some of, the, um, some of the formats may not work at the moment because there are still adaptations to do. Um, as for the output, uh, well, again, we have um, uh, out, um, hardware outputs from SDI and ASI that have not been merged at the moment, but they exist somewhere on GitHub. Uh, so if you look for it, you can ask us and we'll tell you where it is. Uh, natively, we support, as usual, the file UDP RTP. Um, we also support uh, compliant TSMAX. So that's one of a kind. That's uh, probably the, the, the thing that differentiates us most from other projects in that we have a compliant TSMAX that outputs stream that are analyzed by a um, professional analyzer and they say it's okay. So that's quite a good thing. Multicad directory again. And we can use also external libraries. So libaby format, this time it works. So in production, I have streams to RTMP, Icecast, and other, uh, and other uh, formats using libaby format. Uh, and GLX, Alza. Um, and we were talking yesterday about Wayland. Uh, uh, Fernman was talking about the Wayland output also that he's working on. Um, so, uh, so inputs and outputs are okay, but what can you do in between? Um, so first, the filters that we have. So internally, natively, we support, well, the standard deinterlace bleating. Bleating means to take a picture and you bleat it on top of your video, like a logo, uh, with, with or without transparency. Uh, bleating also allows us to do mosaic, I will show you later. Uh, crop. Uh, we also have V210 uh, pack and pack uh, assembly optimized functions. Uh, if you don't know what it is, uh, good for you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's, um, it's some kind of a format uh, output by some SDI cards uh, for 10-bit video. Uh, and so it's more compact than the traditional approach on 16-bit, but it's also uh, much harder to read. Um, external libraries, of course, are very useful for filters. Uh, of course, CBD codec provides most of our uh, um, decoders and encoders. Uh, X264 is also an encoder we use a lot. Uh, and the traditional software software resample as well. LivSpeak is a recent addition that allows to do um, resampling without changing the, the, the pitch. So it's actually much nicer uh, for them in the broadcast world where you have to compensate for a drift while you don't have you don't hear it uh, thanks to LivSpeak. And well, we also have bindings to LibZVBI, but just for um, American subtitling system. Um, Another important piece of uh, our um, project is what we call the framers. Uh, so the framers are analog to what EV codec calls the parsers. So that's basically a place where you have the knowledge about the codecs. So um, that's pieces of code that will parse the codecs, tell you this is a frame, this is a header for a frame, this is a 25 FPS stream, uh, and interpolates the PTS from frame to frame and so on. Um, but in addition to that, so it's not just a parser, but it also acts as what EV codec again calls bitstream filter that allows you to transform um, 
um, the f a format, a stream format into another. For instance, in H.264, uh, if you want to put H.264 into TS, you have an annex called Annex B. That is, you put a start code in front of your structures. Uh, if you want to put uh, H.264 in MP4, it's a different format. It's not start code anymore, but it's based on size. Uh, and so this transformation is uh, dealt with by um, the, the framers in, in our project. We also have an interesting mechanism in which all of this is actually performed automatically without even you knowing it. Uh, so the, basically the sync talks to the previous pipes and says, I need Annex B. And so the framer uh, will say, oh, I don't receive Annex B, so I will convert automatically. And we have support for, well, a few video formats, MPEG-2, H.264, and now H.265, that's a recent edition, a lot of audio formats, uh, and subtitling uh, systems, or so text and, subtitle, and DVB subtitles. Uh, why would you use UPipe for broadcast world? Uh, well, we have several assets you know, in addition to those I already mentioned. Um, our clock system is actually one of the major points, as we said uh, yesterday at the meetup. Um, in UPipe, we keep actually three clocks <coughs> for each packet, the original timestamp that was in the stream, a reconstructed timestamp that's always monotonously increasing, uh, so the DMUX makes sure that it's always uh, monotonously increasing, um, and that's what we would call the program timestamp. So it's basically the clock of the encoder, the guy that uh, gives you the, the, the stream. And we have the system timestamp. So the system timestamp is based on uh, the clock of your, your, your hardware, your, 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 your machine. Um, uh, and so typically for display, you would use the system timestamp. Um, uh, most of the projects only keep the system timestamp, but that means that if you have a drift, sometimes you have a shorter delay or longer delay, and so you don't only have 40 milliseconds exactly between frames, and that's a problem for some codecs. Um, <coughs> so that's why we keep all of those clocks. Also, um, the system timestamp, I said it was the, the system time. That's not completely true. Usually it's get time of day or clock get time. But uh, there are also use cases where it's interesting to get the, the clock of a hardware clock, like on the ASI or SDI card. And that's the use case we have in, in reality. So you can replace all of these by any other hardware clock if you want. In your pipe, everything is dynamic. Uh, that means uh, the, um, the 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 model of um, of your pipe is to <coughs> is transport stream. So in transport stream, you can have new elementary stream. You can remove an elementary stream at any at any time. So you can have subtitling arriving all of a sudden. Uh, so everything has been built in your pipe to allow for um, automatic uh, forking of a, a new decoder, a new parser, and so on, uh, if needed if the interface, if the user wants it, of course. But so the, the, the framework allows that. Um, we also have efficient threading. You decide where you put the threads, not our framework. So if you have a thread, let's say AV codec, uh, usually you want to deploy to another thread, you just create what we call worker, and it will move to another thread. If you don't want it for some reason, because you, for instance, you're very low latency, you can work with no thread at all. Uh, the framework allows that, as long as your core uh, is enough, of course, to do all of that. We also have shared buffers uh, with copy on write and zero copy semantics. So now you can see that more and more, but we've had that since uh, 2012. And UR bindings I already talked about earlier. Um, so that, that was for the assets and the inventory. Let's see a few real-world um, examples. Uh, so the first example, I'm not sure you will see properly, but let's try. Uh, the first real-world <laughs> example I have is some kind of a player. So it can be a player on your, on your PC, but it can also be an IRD, an integrated receiver decoder, uh, like in the professional world. Uh, so these graphs have been made by the UPipe dump API that I talked about earlier. So it's actually everything that uh, is uh, spawned when you, you start a UPipe pipeline. So on top of it, you have the source. Actually, it's in a worker, the W worker source. So it's in a different, in a different thread for performance reasons. And we read from, well, in that case, from a file. It can be also a FIFO. Um, then is coming the TSDMAX. Um, so the TMAX DMAX is the main thread here, is the main, um, is the main, um, main pipe, super pipe, we call it, that has a son, that's the program and two other sons, the program has two other sons, that the, the audio and that the video. So inside uh, the DMUX itself, there are a lot of subpipes that do a lot of things like decaps, um, PSD caps, framers, and so on. And on the output, you have your frames, 
and in two different workers for audio and video, uh, you decode it with an AV codec. Here is the part of the uh, pipeline that deals with subtitles, bleating subtitles, if you have some. In our case, we don't have. FFMT is something that uses uh, software scale and uh, the interlace to the interlace and, uh, well, put it in the correct format. Uh, it's RGB in that case because we are using JLX. JLX and uh, Trick P and uh, Play Video and Play um, Pipe are used for synchronization. Uh, so, looks and uh, well, the audio is also on its own thread, so that's why it's a worker. I'm not sure if you can see it properly. I don't see it in that distance, but uh, I hope so. Um, let's take a, a little bit more complicated example, that the, um, a program that does a TS with multiplexing. So we have um, a TS at the source. So again, in our worker source here, we have a UDP source this time, RTP decaps. Um, and we want to create another uh, UDP, and we remultiplex in, the, in between. We could also transcode, but that would add more complexity to the graph. So <coughs> the graph is already uh, barely readable, so uh, let's, let's try to keep it simpler. So again, after um, the source, uh, we enter the TSDMUX. So again, in that case, we only have one uh, elementary stream, so I chose to have only one video because otherwise it uh, complicates things a lot. Um, so the internal of the TSDMUX is the split pipe that allows to uh, select which PID you want. Uh, and we also have decoders for PAT and PMT, which has internal um, structures of the TS. And then you have the TSMUX, which is quite symmetric compared to the TSDMUX. Uh, MUX program and um, well input elementary stream. The output of the TS MUX is then sent to also another worker thread that adds an RTP uh, uh, header and outputs it to UDP. The last use case, because I'm running out of time, is a v quite nice uh, application we use in my company uh, for recording. So I act actually I, simplif I simplified it a lot because otherwise it would be too big to display on the screen. Uh, but basically, we have an application where we receive a stream from UDP again, uh, UDP RTP. We record it um, uh, immediately as a TS, but at the same time, we decode it, so Demux it, decode it, to get some uh, frames, the key frames, for, for thumbnails. And we recreate JPEGs from the thumbnails. So here you see a dub pipe that one is directly written to, uh, to the disk, and the other is sent to the TS Demux again. So now you're used to it. Um, and at the output of the TSDMUX, we have um, a bit more pipeline. Between the arrows, you can see the types, uh, but uh, it's a bit... Uh, so AV codec, the interlace, because for JPEG you want it uh, an interlace. And this uh, pipeline here is ad hoc, <coughs> creates sums out of the, uh, the, the, the frames we've uh, selected. And we record it with AV codec encoder, this one for JPEG and write it with a file sync to a file. Okay, last use case, but this time I won't show you a graph because it would be enormous. It's a mosaic. So this is, for instance, a mosaic we have uh, at work. So this is a real life example. Um, so basically all of this is done with UPipe um, using a pipeline per input, um, outputting to um, bleed functions, to bleed pipes, uh, that will bleed each of the um, thumb to uh, a single picture. And so normally it's also live. Uh, uh, this is also for the audio. So that's a nice contribution by uh, OBS. Um, it, it moves with your audio level. So all of this is done with uh, a UPI pipeline. Other use cases that we have in production that I did not have time to, you know, to talk about uh, here. So IRD, of course, uh, we have a company using that from TS. We could also imagine it from HLS. Live encoder, live transcoder to TS <coughs> or to RTMP, IceCast, anything that IV format support, basically. Um, file transcoder, that's something like we have in our company as well. We, we, from TS, usually, to MP4. That's a uh, you know, typical use case for us. Uh, we also have an MPTS MUX that's uh, a product from my company as well, based entirely based on UPipe and the TS MUX uh, that you've seen earlier. It would be quite a large um, um, workflow to show, but uh, but it works with UPipe. 
And also something we demonstrated actually at the IBC last year uh, is a cloud system with the overlay. So we've just played out files, decoded files, and added a logo that, uh, that moves and, uh, and a banner and, uh, and um, a picture inside of a picture, picture in picture, and so on. So I think I'm right on time for some question, Kiran. Uh, I just wanted to, you mentioned uh, HTTP. Uh, are, is it compatible with HTTPS? So you uh, you said I talked about HTTP, but uh, is it compatible with HTTPS? At the moment, I don't think so, uh, because the the, the companies that provided it doesn't use it. So. Uh, All right, the third party work with you. Uh, the, yes, it's um, a nameless uh, network operator. I'm not sure we can say who it is who contributed uh, that part uh, to us. And they, they did HTTP, they did AES, uh, also uh, unscrambling for, for the, if the stream is, 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 is scrambled. AES encryption is available? Yes, yes, it's, uh, it's already merged in. Uh, it also supports whether you have the audio uh, inside, you know, mixed with the video or a separate uh, file uh, variant, uh, I don't know how you call it, uh, in your M3 or U8. Um, so, which uh, uh, MPEG-TS standard do we comply to? First, the ISO, and uh, what I, I was actually referring to with that is the fact that we're TSTD compliant. Uh, that means that the, uh, the timing of our packets has very strong constraints in the TS specification. Uh, you can't send the packet too early, you can't send it too late either, you can't burst, and so on. All of that is uh, specified in the, the specification, and it's actually very difficult to understand. It took me years. Uh, so that was what I was referring to. We also comply to DVB, and we have decoders for um, SDT and uh, NIT and so on. Well, usual. Uh, that's not specific to our project, but uh, yeah. The use cases for? Have you published the, the code, the use cases, the use cases that you showed? Uh, so have we published the code for the use cases? Some of them are online. Uh, so the player basically is uh, a, an example that we call the Uplay. That's in the example directory of uh, the Upy repository. So if you want to see our code, it's on GitHub. Uh, GitHub. Um, so the player is. The transcoder, no, the TS Remux is also uh, you have um, it's a test unit actually called Upipe TS test that uh, that we use to test uh, that our demux and mux don't change behavior from release to release. Um, the um, the third one was recording uh, is not uh, it's actually uh, not published yet. Probably at some point we will, but but uh, not so far. Uh, one also very important thing, if you wish to contact us, um, so the, we have a website, upipe.org, of course, uh, we, you can, we have our GitHub, and um, if you wish to talk to us, the best is to come to our IRC, upipe on free node. Uh, we also have a mailing list, but uh, usually when I say that, Kiran laughs. <laughs> So what kind of uh, tele so what kind of uh, subtitles uh, standard we support in uh, in UPI? That's okay. That's for Vank. For ah, well, Vank. Sorry. So for, for video and series, for those of you who don't know that, video and series is a part of uh, the picture on the SDI uh, uh, interface, so raw video that embeds uh, some structure. Uh, so basically, OP47. So that means uh, uh, teletext, uh, basically. So we we take that and we t turn it into a teletext uh, packet. Um, and other things that we do. All the Americans, so, so in SD, CEA 608, uh, legacy teletext, in HD 708, um, and some other things. Oh, all the American SD, and all the European SD, and the pass through of the US bank as well. So, captions and subtitles. Yeah, I'm not sure it's in bank, it's in VBI, right? Well, in SD, it's VBI. Yeah, in SD, it's VBI. Yeah, yeah. I was specifically referring to VANC because I worked okay. on it uh, last summer. And the other thing we support is COTI 104. 
that's not for subtitling, but that's to to um, to determine the timing of, of the beginning of of show or the end of the show or splicing and so on. One more question. Really quick. Uh, how about DVB sub? So how about DVB sub? <coughs> the thing is, DVB sub you won't find it in SDI okay. because there is no, as far as I know, there is no standard to embed it in, in SDI. OTS, OTS, so, so, uh, so from OTS to OTS, we we of course um, demultiplex it and remultiplex it. Uh, I think I think you have code that allows to to put it on screen. Do you be sub? That's actually for teletext, but it would be no, just for, for teletext. It should work for it. It's, it, the bitmap should work. We don't do we yeah. Uh, actually, it's never been tested, but it should work. Um, uh, if your question was, uh, do we support um, transcoding to the text to DVB sub? At the moment, no. But this is something we're seriously thinking about. Okay, thank you. That's it, I think. Thank you. You're welcome.